to happen right now, it has to happen next week. The Senate is set for a health care showdown because they're trying to get this bill passed as part of the reconciliation window, and it ends on September 30th. Now, our next guest is a yes on the Graham-Cassidy repeal bill, and he is a no on hearing from Jimmy Kimmel about it. Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana joins us now. Senator, good to have you here to make the case. Jimmy Kimmel took it to you on his show. I'll play it for the audience. I'm sure you're aware. Listen, lady. Um... Kimmel's a funny guy, but I don't think anybody would confuse him with a well-respected health care expert. I wouldn't take advice from Charlie Sheen either. What's your response to the latest salvo? Uh, Mr. Kimmel is a funny guy. That was a, a, a funny clip you showed. I didn't see a show last night, but I, I read about it this morning. Um, look, I hope Mr. Kimmel's son gets better. Uh, he's a dad. I'm a dad. My, my son had a serious illness at, at one point, and I remember how I felt. I was a, I was a wreck. Um, and Mr. Kimmel is entitled to his opinion. This is America. You know, you can believe what you want, uh, but I can believe what I want, too. And the way I analyze the bill is this. The Affordable Care Act, Chris, is not perfect, nor is Graham Cassidy. Um, there's no free lunch and you're not going to get one with this bill. But the litmus test for me is, is the replacement better than the Affordable Care Act? And at this point, for me, that's a yes. Now, I add two caveats. Um, if this bill is brought up on the floor, there are going to be a lot of amendments. We will probably be there all day and all night, maybe two days in a row. So I want to see what the amendments do. Number two, uh, I say this to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. If people start sm making special deals and certain states get special treatment at the expense of my state, mm. um, I'm, I'm going to be very unamused. All right, so let's look I, at this I, a little bit, Senator. I think that's right. Le I hear you. Let's look at some of this. One, it is a special deal okay. by definition because this reconciliation window is an end run around um, regular legislation. You know it. I know it. Anybody who researches this knows it. So this is this is uh, pulling a fast one any way you look at it. And that's why they're trying to get it through by next week. So the process is what it is. There's no guarantee any amendments get put on this unless McConnell wants mm -hmm. them put on. And the kind that you're talking about protecting the kind of people who are going to get beaten down in your state. Your governor says it. The guy who runs Medicaid in your state says it. He probably won't be for those kinds of amendments. So I'm asking you, you say it's not as good as the ACA. Your own governor, your own Medicaid guy says you're wrong. The premium is going to go up. You're not going to have the money for Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. The needy people like so many you have in Louisiana are going to suffer and they're going to suffer in exchange for giving the government tax dollars to go play with in tax reform. You'll have money after this. But who suffers because of it? Well, two points. Number one, um, I disagree with you about the amendments, Chris. Under reconciliation, amendments are unlimited. The Democrats can offer as many amendments as they want. So can the Republicans. Right. I know like, you can uh, offer them it, up. I'm saying there's like no the guarantee they get a, they get um, attached that's to true. this legislation. I agree with that. And McConnell no, no, is not feeling true. what you're saying you want. And Graham and Cassidy aren't feeling what people like you are going to want from states where you have such a big pool of the impoverished and needy who are going to get cut out if the money's not there for Medicaid. Your governor has said it. Um, the second point I was going to make is that all these projections about the impact of the bill, I don't understand how they're able to make the projection because the whole, whole bill is premised on giving large amounts of money, it'll be billions of dollars to the states and allowing the states to, divine, to devise their own plans. Now, I don't think anybody knows what kind of plans they're gonna devise. For example, a state like Louisiana could take these billions of dollars and establish a high-risk pool. It is a fact, which my governor knows, by the way, um, that 10% that, uh, of the American people spend 67% of the health care dollars. 50% uh, 
uh, spend about uh, about five uh, about mm -hmm. uh, fifty no five percent spend fifty percent. Right. That's the ought to be the target. So you could take this money, set up a high risk pool for those folks, and it would lower the premiums on the people who aren't in the high risk pool. And that's just one option. But all these studies that are coming out, unless they're clairvoyant. They don't know what the impact of this bill is going to be point. because they don't know what states are Fair going point. to Fair point. One substance point and uh, one process point. The substance uh -huh. point is your governor's okay. constructive argument and other ones who are dealing with populations of the impoverished is you're giving me a lot of money. True. And I like the control, but it ain't enough and I can't match it. I'm not going to be able to keep these people on the rolls. High risk pools are really expensive and usually show under coverage. They did during the ACA mm -hmm. extension period between when they could get the markets up. They tried high risk pools. They're really pricey and they undercover the vulnerable people that you're talking about. The process point is, Senator, how can you respect and go along with this process when the reason we can't know how it's going to turn out is because you're not letting the CBO score it? McConnell's rushing it through and people like you are endorsing that move. So you're right. We don't know what it's going to do. And we don't know because the CBO doesn't have the time to score it. And your party is using that to play to advantage. Your own criticism is being used as leverage in this situation. How can you vote for a bill when you know it's not going to be scored? I don't see how CBO can score it. How can they score the unknown? No, How no, can no. They, predict they can score California. the impact. They've done it before. No, no, no. This is what no, they no, do. No, they can't. No, they can't. No, what they can't. No, they can't. This you is can't what they do. This bill. Because, because they don't know what the states are going to do. But they, they, make, pro they state, make projections off the needs of these states. We know how we do this. No, this they don't. This they is can't. an alchemy. This isn't this, guesswork. This, this is can't. what they do. We're just gonna have we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. That CBO well, we can't accept that to your own point. Not magical. The unknown is a danger because if the state is not insistent on doing what they need to do for these people, and I'm uh -huh. not ascribing negative motives. I'm saying, let's say with pre-existing conditions. Well, you have to cover them if you want a waiver and uh -huh. you have to do the right thing. They decide who gets covered and who doesn't. And the companies decide how much they charge. And when you take those two elements out of what you have mm -hmm. right now with the ACA, you inject risk. And risk, as we have seen time and time again, often winds up going to the detriment mm -hmm. of the people who need the help. You know this. I don't mean to tell you uh, your, your own situation. You know it better than I ever will. Mm -hmm. Well, let me try it this way. We're, we're, not, we're talking about 7% of the population. If you add up all the people who get subsidies under Obamacare and all the people added through Medicaid, that's about 7% of the American people. If you're on Medicare, this bill doesn't impact you. If you're getting insurance through your employer, which is 61% of the American people, this bill doesn't impact you. Mm. Those 7% of Americans are very important. But in order to help those 7% of Americans, and it didn't do, the uh, Affordable Care Act didn't do it adequately, the Affordable Care Act punishes a lot of the people who aren't wealthy uh, among the other 93%. Now, this bill, in my opinion, you may disagree, and like I say, this is America. You can believe what you want. No, I just but test the I argument. Think this Go bill ahead, is going to lower. I, I understand. Uh, I think this bill is going to lower costs. For whom? That's the most important thing for for everybody. Well, how? It That's seems the almost most an important. impossibility. How can you pull money out, let the companies charge whatever they want mm -hmm. to people who are vulnerable, and it becomes less expensive? Mm -hmm. Less expensive, maybe, for someone they like me, thank God I'm healthy and young they, enough where they, I'll get an advantageous they, they policy. They can't charge whatever they want. Well, it says but who? they can charge whatever they want. For example, well, let me explain. Please. Um, uh, this this uh, new plan will be run through the CHIP program. CHIP stands for Children's right. Health Insurance Program. CHIP requires that pre-existing conditions be, be covered. On top of that, if a state wants to make a change, they call it a 1332 waiver, right. then it has got to get permission of the Secretary of the Department of Human Serv Health and Human Services. Right. That, the standard that's being used, I'll admit it's normative, but the standard being used is the change, is the new proposal adequate and affordable. Right, but the and protections it, that uh, you're going to have in this bill and going forward are less 
than those which are there right now. Yeah, but Remember, let me give you an example. The ACA let, wasn't let just about saving example, money, though. It was about ensuring outcomes for the needy. That's why. That, that's why those protections it matter. But sure go ahead, Senator. Wasn't about, Final point it sure you. was not about... It sh it sure wasn't about saving money. Well, look, I the mean, rate of increase of premiums, though, is less is than it was before the ACA. But go ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Well, Let me give you a agree with it, but example. that's the fact. The rate of uh, increase is uh, less. Go ahead. Uh, small town accountant in my state making about seventy grand a year before Obamacare. He was he chose an insurance policy was paying mm -hmm. seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Affordable Care Act wiped that out. He had to buy on an exchange. He's paying seventeen hundred dollars yeah. a month. If, if his He's after, not alone. when you would compare his after tax, if you had to compare his after tax income to the cost of the health insurance he's got to buy now, he's spending a third of his after tax income. Yeah, he's not alone. He's not happy. He's not alone. The and individual markets have problems. And he is. They needed to be addressed. There are a lot of people who did have their rates come down. There are a lot of people who are in better position. The interesting thing I'm hearing from you, Senator, is the actual, the mm -hmm. opposite argument that I'm hearing from your leadership. Your le you just said, look, uh, the overwhelming majority of the country won't be even impacted by this. 60% get it from their employer. Then you got Medicaid, Medicare. And so we're dealing That's with right. about 7% and they matter. And we want to make sure that they're all right. But they're only 7%. Your leadership does the opposite. They no, make no, it sound like and for every accountant right? story that you can tell, you have huge numbers of people mm -hmm. who are covered now, literally millions who wouldn't have been covered otherwise, and people who need special mm -hmm. protections and special care who wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. And you're saying scrap the whole ACA, your leadership, to help those who got beaten up in the individual markets, baby out with the bathwater. You're actually mm -hmm. saying the opposite now, which is most people are going to be okay, so don't worry, but we're going to help uh, this, this special part, this 7% as well, but nothing's perfect. There are mm -hmm. opposite arguments that are going to be on the same floor next week. Little interesting. No, kind of shows the disarray involved here. Well, let me try it another way. You're pretty good. Um, let me try it another way. If you make, let's say, ten thousand dollars a year, that's your total income. In many states right now, under Obamacare, you're not covered. You're not covered. Um, under under Graham Cassidy, a state could choose to cover you. A state could. Now, I'm how, just saying the unknown is a risk, Senator, and unfortunately, we're going to wind up telling these stories. Allison, me, the team here at CNN, we're going to wind up telling these stories in the months and years to come about who gets treated the right way and who gets treated the wrong way and why. And that's why mm -hmm. there's so much and concern. And you should, Chris. But, Senator, and you should. well, we'll be on it. You know that for damn sure. But what I'm saying.